Alright, so I should really stop trying to plan videos because they never come out when I want them to. What up everybody, it's your girl Angel from Angel Loves Book and today I am finally here with my very first book review. It took me forever to figure out how I wanted to do this. I had thought I was going to do one thing and decided not to do it, so whatever. So for my first review, I am going to be reviewing a Spell for Chameleon by Pierce Xanthony. And yes, I did say Xanthony, not Anthony. You know why. Alrighty, so before we begin, I'm going to go ahead and go over what exactly I'm going to be looking at in my review. So I'm going to be looking at a total of seven things. The first one is the beginning of the story. The second one is the climax or the midpoint of the story. The third one is the ending. The fourth point is characters. The fifth point is plot. The sixth point is description. And the seventh point is style. I will also be giving an overall review for this novel, what I thought about it, as well as who I would recommend this novel to. So let's begin. So Bink lives in a magical land called Xanth, hence the joke at the beginning of this video. And in Xanth, everyone and everything has a magical power that only they can do. Well, except for Bink, that is. Now, the issue is, Bink has to discover what his magical talent is, if he has any, before his 25th birthday, where he's going to be exiled from Xanth into what they call Mondania, which is where people without magic lives. So in order to find his magical talent, Bink goes to visit the good magician Humphrey. And along the way, he gets a ride from a centaur, is involved in a fake trial, and even gets kidnapped by a sorceress. Sound like any Greek heroes to you? Bink finally makes it to the good magician Humphrey's castle. And discover that Bink does in fact have a magical power. In fact, Humphrey insists that he does. However, for some reason, his magic is being blocked, so they can't figure out what it is. Meaning Bink is still at risk of exile unless he finds a way to reveal his magic. First off, before we start our review, I want to apologize for the noise. My rabbit is throwing a temper tantrum back there. He hi, he hi the camera, Luna. He hi. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the beginning. So in the beginning, we are introduced to 24-year-old Bink, who lives in the Norse village in Xanth. Xanth has grown up his entire life without a magical talent, which is a problem in Xanth, since everyone has to have magic, and anyone who doesn't gets exiled. Bink decides to go visit the good magician Humphrey, even if it means working for the good magician for a year as payment. The beginning of the story is extremely, extremely tedious to get. There is so much exposition in it, it's not even funny. Um, what I think Pierce's, Pierce was trying to do was, he was trying to do some world building, but it ended up coming out as a lot of really unneeded exposition. I think it would have been a lot better if he had spaced it out throughout the novel. Instead of putting it all at the beginning like that, because it made the beginning so difficult to get through. The second thing I'm going to talk about is the climax. While this book may have had a slow beginning, the climax was anything but. The climax kept the tension high, and this is where we find the most interest in our character. Especially when Bink meets the evil magician Trent, and he has to decide whether his loyalties lie with Xanth, the nation that exiled him for having no magic, despite being very smart, or the evil magician Trent, who, while he is quote-unquote evil, he has a lot of good ideas. The third thing we have to talk about is the ending, which, sad to say, after such a strong climax, suffers the same thing that the beginning does. Lots and lots of exposition. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is characters. Now, there are so many characters in A Spell for a Chameleon that it would be impossible for me to do a video on all of them. So for now, I'm just going to focus on the three main players. The first one is Bink. 
and he is our protagonist. And for a protagonist, he is completely boring. Not in the, oh, he's just a normal guy kind of way. He's boring, even for a normal guy. He spends more time thinking than actually doing anything. And it's not until the end that we really see him stand up for himself. So the next character I'm going to talk about is Chameleon, who the book is named after. Chameleon is a young girl who goes by a couple of names throughout the book. She is probably one of the more interesting characters in this book. She follows the 28-day feminine cycle and goes from being drop-dead, goddess-like gorgeous, but completely dumb, to being crazy ugly, but a complete and total genius. When Chameleon is in her smarter phase, she is witty and funny, and I absolutely loved her. And even in her more dumb stages, she's still hilarious, some of the things she gets into. The third character I'm going to talk about is actually Trent, the evil magician. Trent, I would describe as being the antagonist for a spell for Chameleon, though he really doesn't come into a play until a lot later in the book. But he's not your traditional villain. Pierce describes Trent as being an extremely handsome, very smart, he is tactical. This all together makes Trent extremely dynamic and still more interesting than Bink. Of course, like I said, there are a lot more characters. You have the sorceress Iris, you have Sabrina, and of course you have the good magician Humphrey. But these characters really didn't play that big of a role in the overall plot of the story, so I didn't really think they needed to be mentioned. Next thing I'm going to talk about is plot. There isn't a lot to say about the plot. It's a quest style fantasy in which someone is looking for something that could change his fate or destiny. In this case, it's Bink looking for his magical talent. So I wouldn't say it was I would not say it was entirely unique in this sense. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is description. And for description, like many books written around this time period, which this book was written in about the 70s, this book is extremely heavy on description. Very heavy. However, I think for A Spell for Chameleon, it actually works. Xanth is an extremely unique place where everything, and I mean everything, has some kind of magic. You have beer trees that actually produce beer. You have pillow bushes where you can just walk right up and pluck a pillow off of it. You have horse flies that are actual horses with wings. Anth is such a unique world and Anthony does such a wonderful job describing everything to us. And he does a really good job of putting us in that world. Well, the next is style. So for style, Pierce Anthony has a very humorous, quick-witted writing style. However, he can also ramble about things that really have nothing to do with what's happening. This happens quite a bit throughout the book, and it usually comes out as Bink's thought process, and this is partially what made the beginning and ending so tedious to read. And finally, overall. Overall, I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodread. The beginning, while the beginning and ending were extremely tedious, the middle and the climax was enough to really keep you invested and, and really keep you wanting to read the novel, even if Bink was a dull, dull character. Like, I know a couple people may hit me for saying this, but I think he's almost Bella Swan dull. And finally, who would I recommend this to? So I would recommend this pretty much to anyone who enjoys fantasy, especially if you enjoy like the Lord of the Rings series by J.R.R. Tolkien or other kind of fantasy, you know, the hero goes on a quest kind of thing. Anyway, that was my first review. Um, it was a little unorganized this time. I'm really sorry about that. 
I'm still kind of new to this and I'm still learning, so hopefully next time my review will be a lot smoother than it was this time. So if you have any suggestions for what I should review next, leave them in the comments section below and I will make sure to hit you guys up. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I know I said I'd be doing them on Wednesday. We'll see how well that actually works. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.